In this video, we're going to talk about the electron transport chain in mitochondria. And where we are here is we have previously discussed all sorts of ways a cell can collect electrons via NADH primarily, but also FADH2. Now remember, FADH2, unlike NADH, is actually part of a specific enzyme. Uh, namely succinate dehydrogenase within the citric acid cycle, but as I had said in the past, it's also a uh, complex two in the uh, electron transport chain. And so here's where that's happening, where succinate is being oxidized into fumarate, and that electron is being passed from succinate through FADH2 and then on into the electron transport chain. So. We are here in the mitochondria. We are talking about one, two, three, four enzyme catalyzed uh, redox reactions. So to properly understand a redox reaction, let's remind ourselves about uh, conjugate redox pairs. So if we take a look at a redox reaction, that being the oxidation of acetaldehyde, uh, excuse me, the reduction of acetaldehyde to ethanol by NADH. So acetaldehyde is being reduced to ethanol. NADH is being oxidized to NAD+. So that means that acetaldehyde and ethanol are a conjugate redox pair, and NADH and NAD+, are also a conjugate redox pair. Acetaldehyde, because it is being reduced, um, is called the oxidizing agent. It is stealing electrons from NADH, thus becoming ethanol. And NADH is giving electrons to acetaldehyde, thus becoming NAD+. So in that respect, NADH is our reducing agent because it's becoming oxidized. Acetaldehyde is our oxidizing agent because it is stealing or oxidizing something and itself is being reduced. Make sure that you can apply all three of these terms uh, to the various conjugate redox pairs in reactions like this. Now there is a important um, measurement. Standard reduction potential is a measure of a molecule's affinity to electrons. And here we have in the, this table and the next table shows us the standard reduction potential of a whole bunch of important biomolecules. And what I want you to notice is the higher the number, the better that molecule is at stealing electrons. They are better oxidizing agents. And so I've got these red arrows pointed to molecules that, I, that are important for the electron transport chain. And I want you to come back to these tables after we finish the electron transport chain. And I want you to compare where do each of these molecules fall in the electron transport chain and what is the relative uh, reduction potential of each one of them. Notice oxygen has the highest, followed by cytochrome C, ubiquinone, FAD, and NAD+. Okay, so NAD+, not very good at stealing electrons from other things. It's way better at donating electrons to stuff. Okay, so again, Come back to these tables once you've gone through this video. Compare where each of these arrowed molecules lie within the uh, electron transport chain and look then compare that to their relative reduction potentials. All right, now the standard change in reduction potential is a way to give us an idea of just how much energy is going to be released in any given redox reaction. And the way in which you determine the change in reduction potential is this, is you take a look at a redox reaction here, and then you identify the redox pairs, pyruvate to lactate, NADH to NAD+. Then you look through the tables of your book, tables such as this, and you identify 
those redox pairs. Okay, so here, if you look in the table, you would find pyruvate uh, takes a couple of electrons and hydrogens to become lactate. Okay, we're going in the same direction that we are in a reaction there. And so we use that standard reduction potential without changing the sign. Now, however, if you were to look in that table, you would find not NADH to NAD+, you would find NAD+, to NADH, okay, at minus 0 0.320. Now we are looking at it in the opposite direction in this particular reaction here, and so we have to take the opposite sign that we see in the tables in the book. So in this direction here, we see negative. We're doing it in the opposite direction here, so we have to give it a positive. And then you simply add those two values together. The change in reduction potential is going to be the reduction potential of pair one, that's uh, minus 0 0.185 plus the Redox potential of pair two, make sure you get that sign correct, plus 0 0.320, and that gives us a positive 0.135 volts. Now, the more positive that change in reduction potential is, the more negative the delta G is going to be of that reaction. And in this case here, We've got a fairly positive reduction potential, and so we're going to have a fairly negative uh, a delta G. So this reaction then, under standard conditions, uh, is going to be endergo uh, exer exergonic. And most importantly, all exergonic reactions release energy, and that energy can be used to do work. And that's the whole point of the electron transport chain. It's just a series of redox reactions that are exergonic, that release energy, and that energy is being used to do something specific, and we'll get to that in a second. All right, electron transport chain. It involves four transmembrane enzyme proteins that exist within the inner membrane of the mitochondria. And all of these folds here are called cristae, and they increase the surface area of that inner membrane. Therefore, there's more room for these four um, transmembrane enzyme proteins to exist in. And the important spaces here then is the space between the outer and the inner membrane. That's called the intermembrane space. And then we have the space inside here of the inner membrane, and that's called the matrix. So here we have the inner membrane mitochondria. Here we have our one two, three, four enzymes that catalyze redox reactions. And what this is showing you is what are they, what are those reactions being coupled to? They are very exergonic. And remember, we can couple exergonic reactions with endergonic reactions to convert them into exergonic reactions. So what are we coupling those exergonic redox reactions to? The pumping of protons against their concentration gradient. Moving protons from the matrix into the intermembrane space, and that will set up a, uh, a source of energy, that concentration gradient, that can also then be used where those protons flow back down their concentration gradient through another enzyme called ATP synthase that uses the energy of that proton flow to make ATP from ADP and inorganic phosphate. So if you just follow steps one, two, three, and four, you have the general idea then of what oxidative phosphorylation is. Number one is using reduced substrates as fuel to gather electrons. Number two is those electrons then um, are going to be donated to the electron transport chain. Number four then, uh, that was number two and three. Number four then is those protons moving down their concentration gradient and ATP synthase making ATP. Okay, so what is it that I want you to know with regards to the reactions of the electron transport chain? I want you to know each 
one of these four reactions in the detail that you see here. I want you to know that complex one is also called NADH Q oxidoreductase. That complex two is, look at that, you already know this one, succinate dehydrogenase. Complex three is Q cytochrome C oxidoreductase. And complex four is a cytochrome C oxidase. I want you to know right, what is the source of electrons. So what is getting oxidized? and what is getting reduced. So in this case, NADH is being oxidized and it's being used to reduce um, Q to QH2. And finally, I want you to know how many protons are moving from the mitochondrial matrix, that's what the M means, into the intermembrane, spa uh, intermembrane space. That's what IMS refers to. So let's go into each one of these reactions in more detail. Now the first two we can kind of think of uh, together because they are parallel to one another. They're both different ways in which the cell um, reduces Q to QH2. In one way, the cell is using NADH to do it, and in another way, the cell is using succinate to do it. Now remember, succinate via the FADH2 within uh, complex two, within succinate dehydrogenase. Now Q, let's talk a little bit about Q. Q is referred to as ubiquinone. It is a hydrophobic molecule that looks like this, which means it freely moves within the inner membrane itself. Okay, so it's flowing back and forth uh, within that uh, lipid bilayer of the inner membrane and it shuttles between com complexes and it can carry one or two electrons. And so here is what it looks like when it grabs one electron and hydrogen, and then here's what it looks like when it grabs the second electron and hydrogen. Now you don't have to memorize the structure of ubiquinone, but you should be able to recognize it if you were given it on an exam. So complex one, is responsible for oxidizing NADH and sending those electrons from NADH to um, Q, so reducing Q. So this is just a, a redox reaction in which one molecule has been oxidized and the other one has been reduced. And as any exergonic biochemical reactions, it can be coupled to endergonic reactions. And the endergonic reaction that this is coupled to is the pumping of four protons from the intermembrane space out into, um, from the matrix into the intermembrane space. And so here we have the enzyme and it's embedded within the uh, inner membrane of the mitochondria. And we have NADH is our substrate, and Q right here is our substrate. And the product is NAD plus, plus a proton, and QH2. So that the entire uh, stoichi uh, stoichiometry of this reaction is that we have NADH, plus five protons in the um, N side, so we call that the negative side, that's the matrix side, plus an oxidized Q, gives rise to our oxidized NAD+, a reduced Q, and four uh, protons. Okay. Now, those two hydrogens that are binding Q, those also came from the matrix. Complex two is succinate dehydrogenase. Complex two is the exact same reaction that we saw in the citric acid cycle in that it is using succinate to reduce Q into QH2. In so doing, succinate becomes fumarate. And here uh, we have right there our catalytic cofactor FAD that's mediating the transfer of electrons from succinate to Q. And again, the stoichiometry, succinate plus Q, gives rise to fumarate plus QH2. That's complex two.
Now, complex three, use it. All of those QH2s, all of those reduced uh, quinones that we have uh, within the membrane, the inner membrane of the mitochondria, those then all become substrates for complex three, in which they are used to reduce cytochrome C to the reduced form of cytochrome C. And that reaction is coupled to the pumping of protons against their concentration gradient into the in inner membrane, intermembrane space. Now, cytochrome C is a little bit different than Q. Cytochrome C travels outside of the inner membrane because it's much more polar. It can't travel in the membrane. And the other problem is it only carries one electron at a time, whereas QH2 each have two electrons. And so what that means is the transfer of electrons from a single QH2 to two cytochrome Cs is a little complex. It involves something called the Q cycle. So what we have here are two snapshots in time, one and two. In the first snapshot in time, a QH2 is completely oxidized to Q. And so that means one electron is going to go to cytochrome C, and the other electron is going to go and uh, partially reduce a fully oxidized Q. So there we have our partially reduced Q. And in doing that, we pump two protons into the um, intermembrane space. And then in that same enzyme, another QH2 goes in, gets completely oxidized by uh, to Q. One electron goes to the second cytochrome C. Another electron goes down to finish off the reduction of that partially reduced Q into QH2. And again, two protons are moved against their concentration gradient. And so the net effect here is the complete oxidation of one QH2 and the complete reduction of two cytochrome Cs and four protons pumped against their concentration gradient. Now the Q cycle is a little complex to see and you might want to watch uh, the other videos on the Q cycle that I have uh, in the module. All right, so now all of those electrons that initially came from glucose or that initially came from a fatty acid that were collected in NADH are now in cytochrome C, the reduced form of cytochrome C. And we finally get to the end of our pathway. Complex four is where those two cytochromes that have been reduced are passing their electrons to a half of an oxygen molecule, along with a couple protons from the intermembrane space to make a molecule of water. So oxygen here is the final electron and hydrogen acceptor of the electron transport chain of the oxidation of uh, glucose, for example. And so that water is just a byproduct, which means to do this again, we need to resupply our reactant. We need to resupply O2. How do we do that? We breathe. And we bring in more oxygen, and that more oxygen can then oxidize our cytochrome Cs, and we can keep this electron transport chain going. So, uh, and what we have here then is per two electrons per two cytochrome Cs, two protons are pumped um, from the matrix into the intermembrane space. And so what we end up with by the end here is of course water, that's uh, that we excrete, and we end up with a whole bunch of protons that have been pumped from the matrix into the intermembrane space, setting up a proton gradient that has energy. And the name of that energy, what we, the term we give it is the proton motive force. And that proton motive force 
is what the cell is going to use to make ATP. Okay, so the electron transport chain set up the proton motive force, and now ATP synthase is going to use that proton motive force to make ATP, and we'll watch that in the next video. But until then, again, here are the four reactions of the electron transport chain, and I want you to remember the stoichiometry of what's going on, what's being reduced, what's being oxidized, and where, uh, which ones are coupling that exergonic reaction, redox reaction, to an endergonic uh, pumping of protons against their concentration gradient.